everybody, this is Spy here, and due to popular requests, we have been asked to do a lore series from you people at home specifically in our comment section. And I would like to say thank you for the suggestion. This is our first lore video that we've ever done. Um, and I think I want to start off with a big one. So let's talk about the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave yourself a comment down below to ask for any more of these if you guys want to. This uh, is the first one in the series, as I said a minute or a couple seconds ago, really. And I would like to say uh, thank you all for watching. Um, and don't forget to support this community that we are uh, growing here. And we thank you all very much. Let's get into the video. The Grey Cowl of Nocturnal is a Pete is a helmet and this helmet was made by the Daedric Prince Nocturnal and it has been ba passed around throughout the ages and the cowl that specifically the time frame I would like to talk about on this one on this channel today is the time frame in which it was in the game Oblivion specifically Elder Scrolls 4 and um, what it was and, and, and some of its magical properties and, and what it does as a what it is as, an, as a piece of item like an item to the player and as well to, in the lore itself and I think this is kind of the way I want to do this you know we talk about in game and we'll also talk about um, its effects within the lore and just have some general discussion about it so its role in history was Originally stolen by a guy named Emeril, uh, Emer Daraloth. Emerer, Dar Emerer Daraloth. Uh, he was the first Grand Master of the Thieves Guild. And after he had stolen it, this Grey Cowl, Nocturnal herself, had put a curse upon it to where whoever wore this mask is immediately like erased from history. All accounts of them ever existing is gone. All things that they've ever done is gone. They basically, no one remembers them. They never existed. And no one can recount any information about the person who is under the mask. And what happens is you, when you don the cowl, you become the Great Fox. You take on this mantle of essentially a different personality. And it is the well, the Grand Master of the Thieves Guild. Now, in the time of Oblivion, the man who had found it was named was the Count of Anvil, uh, Corvus Umbranox. And whenever he had slipped it on, um, his wife, the country that he had become so high, uh, such a high member of, and all of his um, kingship, essentially, or lordship had been revoked and no one remembered who he was no one knew who he was anymore he lost all of it as soon as he put it on and became the gray fox now his wife had no real memory of him she was kind of fogged or she was kind of like not uh, fully um remembering right because it had changed time so this mask seems to be able to alter the fabric of some something with time it's not exactly explicit as to how it does this but essentially the mask itself can change a specific person's past and um so whenever this had happened she of course uh had a bit of a, a, a well uh, she couldn't quite decipher what was true and um so he had to run away right uh, and he, he hid within Anvil itself, actually, and he stayed within the city walls. But he had started taking up a house within um, within the Anvil city gate itself. Now, this house was abandoned at the time, and no one had really ever lived there uh, that we can tell of uh, in the games or in the series. No one we know lived there. But the whole point of it is that he took up some kind of base of operations there for for a time and of course then he went to the imperial city later on within the storyline now 
um, the Gray Fox himself is kind of a, 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 myst a mystical idea, right? It's a man who, um, or whoever, man or woman, who puts on the cowl becomes this person, and and it erases you. So it's definitely something I would say if I found myself, I would probably not put on. And it's uh, it it has some weird implications, especially within Oblivion itself, right? Because you are the hero of Kavach, and that means that you specifically. Um, well, are the a large reason of why the Oblivion Crisis was stopped at Kavach and everywhere else within the world. Now, what was that? What would that mean uh, for the player in a lore sense? Um, there is no real answer for that. There's nothing uh, speculation-wise. I think it doesn't really matter. Um, my guesstimate is that essentially there has to at some point there has to be someone to fulfill the prophecy and even if you did it uh putting on the cowl would essentially um put someone else within your place that you were at at that time that he would have done it so i don't think that's exactly i don't know um if that's exactly an accepted theory but that's what i would guess uh from my own personal opinion and my uh my interpretation of the lore itself um another way to to really talk about it is that uh at the end of the game uh spoilers for the last end of the expansion on a 2006 game um in the shivering isles you become lord jay Gorath, and whenever you do you um you lose you basically lose all of your past connection to the world no one remembers you um, being there, and that is actually part of the reason why the Aldemary Dominion, uh, or the Thalmor, was able to take over the Imperial City after you had died, or after you had disappeared. No one could quite recall you, and I think uh, that leads up with the Great Fox, but it, it definitely calls in, causes, calls in some uh, things to question. Um, if you were to have gotten the Great Cowl, and then mantled to become God Sheagora, Mad God Sheagorath. Um, does that mean that Sheagorath now holds the Grey Cowl? I think there is some conversation there about that, and I think that's something we could uh, definitely dispute. Um, however, the curse was lifted from uh, Corvus. And the way it was lifted was the player had snuck into the um, arcane universe, or not the arcane university, the um, center of the city, the big government building. And uh, the player sneaks in there, and they steal from the Elder Council, uh, and they steal a Elder Scroll, one of the very, very few there are, and you steal it. From right underneath the noses of moth priests who are trying to read it or read scrolls like it now using this cow using this um, scroll he was able to go back in time and stop himself from putting it on now that also set the time uh, line right and allowed the um, curse I believe to be removed from him now I think the curse now only exists exists on the item itself. Now I'm not sure exactly uh, how that works, um, but I would say uh, so. Whenever he went back in time, now we know Elder Scrolls have a very large amount of power within the universe because they are essentially the prophecy of time incarnate coming forward and from behind. And Elder Scrolls themselves are a mystical thing that. I don't really exactly have uh, I don't really think they have set standards as to what they are they shift around a little bit on the lore themselves and so but either way he was able to break the curse and he retook up his throne as the count and you were given the mask from him but however you weren't given the mask from him you were given the mask it's a whole thing now can of worms realistically now 
a lot of things uh, change whenever that happens. See, now um, the Thieves Guild has had time to build up because before the before that happening, the Gray Fox was planning a heist to do this specifically, meaning that a lot of the resources were probably tied up elsewhere. And now that you have been the Gray Fox for a long enough period. Um, even though you haven't been, but you have now in the new timeline. Essentially, um, what's uh, strange is that you'll actually have a new guild hall within the Imperial City. Originally, the um, Thieves Guild do not have a guild hall whenever you first join them, and uh, having themselves a nice hall is actually something I would say is pretty nice. Now, uh, what's in this guild hall? Well, typically you're gonna find you're gonna find the things you've stolen before. They'll be around uh, on shelves and whatnot within the Guildmaster's quarters. And being the Guildmaster means that you have the Cowl of the Grey Fox. Now, the Cowl has some weird effects within the game, right? And I would like to talk about that. Now, in the game, it gives you 200 points of carry weight within the Feather Enchantment, which means that you can carry 200 more pounds. Uh, you get life detection. Uh, for 120 feet and it is also a constant effect and you also get a fortify sneak skill 20 points now while wearing the cowl your fame drops to zero and your infamy drops or raises all the way up to 100 now infamy essentially meaning that you're hated and you know everything you do with while while wearing this cowl um, only goes on to the cowl so whenever you wear the cowl in public it accumulates a 500 gold bounty resulting in any guards around coming at you the wearer is given no option to pay off this bounty you can only resist arrest while wearing the cowl the bounty will uh, be the bounty will be removed whenever you unequip the cowl preferably however you may want to try to take it off whenever you're away from people um, but however you, whenever wearing the cowl when you remove it whenever wearing the cowl uh, you can commit as many crimes as you want you can murder you could steal you can honestly uh, go crazy and as soon as you leave a city take off the mask no one will remember that you did it no one will actually uh, you'll remove the bounty. The bounty stays on the helmet. Which is definitely can add to some pretty fun moments, I would say. Um, so like like I said, all things, are uh, all things done while wearing the mask are blamed on the Grey Fox and not you. Now the Grey Cowl also has something uh, written within the, on the uh, top of the head. And it goes from uh, top to bottom and it's actually written in Daedric and the translation is shadow hide OU and Y was omitted um, a lot of people say this has some reference to nightingales um, but either way it's a unique thing that is only on that helmet and uh, yeah now I'd like to say that the gray cowl does not work while it in the Shivering Isles, um, no one there knows about the Grey Fox. It's its own Daedric realm. He's not important there, and so it does not work there. Now, bandits will still engage with the player, but they will not demand payment if they find you on the road. And um, yeah, so that's that's uh, mostly all we have to talk about with the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal. I would like to have a, just a short conversation about it at the end here where I, I just go over um, some things I personally think that uh, personally think is uh, interesting within this um, getting of the Grey Cowl. And I think the, the biggest thing I think is really important or really interesting is I'd like to call out the stealing of um, the stealing of the uh, Elder Scroll itself. Now, this mission is a very, very uh, weird one. You know, you have to actually go in to the Elder Scrolls, or you have to actually, you have to actually go into the Imperial City, 
and you sneak down into the basement of the like essentially the elder council's mem like major area this is the seat of the government in the empire and when you're there you'll find uh, what are called it's a giant um like a sand thing you, know, you turn it around and it counts time and you find one and you click it and what it does is they're called the sands of time and it essentially starts to make time a little fucky and uh from there you climb your way up to the top of the tower trying to dance around guards and whenever you reach to the top that all the monks inside are blinded that's because moth priests uh, whenever they read elder scrolls um it burns their eyes out essentially over time and uh i just would like to say that's this that is one of the uh best missions within the like whole guild line and i i really enjoyed it and i think uh whenever playing oblivion for your first time or even uh, if you're playing any character with a roguish or even magical ability i would say definitely take your time to stop in and do this fantastic guild line uh it's worth it it definitely is worth it and get yourself the great cow of nocturnal and watch this video so you can understand uh more about the lore of it and what it actually means um as an item and where it comes from anyway i would like to say thank you uh for watching we're all very we're all eternally grateful here for the con uh for the people who come and watch our content and i would like to say thank you to you all uh we're past 500 subscribers now and that is fantastic we are ecstatic more than anything that uh people really enjoy this content if you want to see more lore videos uh definitely leave us a comment down below don't forget to like and subscribe and uh today's question i would say is um which is your favorite guild in all of the Elder Scrolls series? Which, uh, specifically for all of you guys, is your favorite? Specifically, your the guilds. Um, leave the main storylines out of it. I think the guilds need a little bit more light on them if they haven't already got enough. They definitely outshine some of the major stories in the game. They're fantastic. Anyway, this that's all from me. Uh, this is Spy signing out. Well, we're at the end of the video here, and uh, we have some extra footage rolling in the background. Uh, we're going to continue to leave it up if you guys want to see me continue to harass these guards. Uh, thank you all for watching. This has been Spy. Bye. Thank you.